All right, step one, crafting your prompt. First, we're gonna create a simple graphic. This is the type of graphic you'd commonly use in laser engraving. It looks like this or this or this, often defined by just one color and kind of has a clip art feel to it. The prompt I'm looking for is a tiger wearing a crown. Now, let me explain the rest of these keyword parameters. Unfortunately for us, these AI programs often default to highly detailed graphic results, but we want something really simple. So we have to use these keywords to hopefully strip down the graphic. The keyword parameters I'm using to do that are vector logo style, line art, flat design, simple, high contrast, black and white, and for my negative parameters, the things I don't wanna see in the image, I use dash dash no, and then background, texture, gradient, gray. After hitting enter, here are the four options that Midjourney presented me with. As you can see, my keyword parameters really help to get a nice flat black and white image. There's really no color detail in any of these. There's a little bit of gray in some of these options. There's a little bit of gray up in the crown here, but this is easy to remove in our next step. I'm gonna choose option number one. This is the closest to what I was looking for. I'm gonna upscale this and download it. Step two, time to vectorize this graphic. And I'm gonna show you how to do this with a free option as well as a paid option. Anytime we're working with the simple graphics, just the one color, flat, black and white, no color, no texture, no gradients, we're gonna to wanna to convert these to a vector so we have an endlessly scalable graphic file that doesn't degrade in quality and also because it is the preferred file format of basically every laser engraving software. For the free option, we're gonna use this website called vectorizer.ai. This is honestly the best vectorizer AI software I've ever come across, and I use this even over the paid tools that I have. So you wanna go ahead and upload the graphic you created in AI. It'll take a minute to run its process and do the vectorization. When it's finished, it's gonna give you a side-by-side -side comparison with the original on the left and the vectorized result on the right, this is a really good result. I really can't even tell the difference between these two. So I'm gonna go ahead and download my new SVG file. So now I have my vectorized SVG file open in Illustrator, and this is where you'd have to do a little bit of cleanup work depending on how well your prompt came out. Like I mentioned, I'm really only looking for black and white. So there are little pieces of gray throughout the image that I'd have to get rid of. So whether you're doing this in Illustrator or directly in your laser engraving software, it doesn't matter, but you'd wanna go ahead and just sort through this image and remove all the details that you don't want. So you just have the black and the white. And after a couple minutes of cleanup work, I have the black graphic that I'm looking for. Now this is an endlessly scalable vector file that I can import directly to my laser engraver. The pros and the cons of the free vectorizer software are the pro, it's free, and the cons, you might have to do a little bit of cleanup work once you're done. For the paid vectorizing option, I'm gonna be using Image Trace in Adobe Illustrator. To use it, I'm just gonna select my image file, then go to Object, Image Trace, and then Make. As you can see, it basically cleared out all of the gray in one shot. I'm gonna change the preset to black and white logo, just in case it does anything. I don't think it does. And if you're not exactly happy with the results, you can go into the advanced panel and mess with the paths. You can add more paths, add the amount of corners. You can add or reduce the noise. I like to add the noise, so I put it down to about one pixel. I then click ignore white just to get rid of the background. And then once it's how you like it, you can go ahead and click expand. And now you have your vector file ready to go. It's often a little bit quicker process than the free vectorizer software. You don't have to do as much cleanup work, but again, this is something that you have to pay for. Now this image is ready to go into your laser engraver. So let me show you a quick example of a laser engraving I did using this image on a piece of wood. But what if you wanna do more than just a simple black and white graphic? You wanna laser engrave one of these awesome designs that you can make with AI. You can laser engrave these images. It's just a little bit of a different process. Instead of vectorizing the graphic, we're gonna create what's called a dithered bitmap. Let's use this graphic as an example. The problem with vectorization is it doesn't handle a lot of detail, a lot of fine gradients, a lot of texture and colors very well. If I were to run this image here through the vectorizer.ai software, this is what it looks like. On the left is the original, and on the right is the vectorized result. 
If we zoom in here, you can see that the vectorization process just kind of turns the image into a puddle of grays and browns and blacks. And that just tells us it's not the right tool for preserving detail in this image when we want to engrave it. So for my complex image example, my prompt is a frog wearing a top hat in a forest, Lord of the Rings style, highly detailed, high contrast. I don't know if those two things go together, but the results look pretty funny. Here are the four options that presented me. I'm going to go with the third one here. So I'm gonna request an upscale of the third. And here is my upscaled image. I'm gonna download this and we'll move on to the next step. I opened this up in Photoshop so we can talk about image size and resolution for a second. When you download your graphic from Midjourney, it's gonna come out at 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels at 72 DPI. And if we convert that to inches, because that's usually more useful when you're laser engraving, it's about 14 inches by 14 inches at 72 DPI. I don't wanna to get too in the weeds about DPI and in laser engraving in this video, but let's just say 72 DPI is far too low for what I wanna do. I want this number to be about 300. And the problem is if I were to just keep this as is and change this number to 300, it will change the resolution to 300, but it's going to make everything just look really bad as you can see on the left here. So the proper way to increase the DPI would be to uncheck resample and then change this number to the number you want. Like I mentioned, I want 300. When I changed that number to 300, it shrank the image down from 14 to about 3.4. Now that's completely fine. If the max size you wanna engrave is 3.4, you can go ahead and go to the next step. However, I wanna do a slightly larger image. So it seems like we're kind of at an impasse. So to give myself some more wiggle room with increasing the DPI, I wanna upscale this image using another free AI program. The upscaling AI I'm gonna be using is called upscale.media and you can use this for free as of now. Our AI upscaling is complete. Our new size is now 4,096 by 4,096. I chose upscale 4X. If I could choose any higher, I would, but you had to pay for it. And then I clicked enhance quality. I don't know exactly what that does, but of course I want an enhanced quality. And you can see the side by side when you hover over, basically the AI takes the image and refactors it to a larger size. That way I have more room to increase the DPI. Checking out our new upscaled image, look at the new size. Now it's 56 inches by 56 inches at 72 re resolution. When I input 300 DPI, it changed my width and my height down to 13.6 by 13.6 and that is plenty of space, I'm gonna end up going smaller than that. So I'm gonna click OK. And now I have my image set at 300 DPI. A higher DPI will mean more detail in the laser engraving. However, there are limits to how high a DPI your laser engraver can complete. So you wanna make sure to try to find a balance between increasing it too high, it doesn't make sense to go to like 900 DPI when the functional range of your laser is only like 318 DPI. To dither our image today, I'm gonna to be using the free version of the ImageR software. If you're not familiar with dithering, basically what's gonna happen is this software is gonna take our image and then it's gonna convert it all to black and white dots. I just uploaded my photo and you can see already the software has converted it to a black and white image. I don't need to do any cropping, so I'm gonna move right on to the resize. Currently this image is sized at 13.65 by 13.65 at 300 DPI. I wanna change this down to about five inches. So my engraving will be five by five, 300 DPI. Resize, you'll see two images. The left is your original and the right is your image that you're editing. Getting a good engraving on a dithered bitmap image like this takes a lot of playing with the settings, but I'm just gonna kinda of run with a little bit of brightness and just add a little bit of sharpening. Next, it's time to choose our dithering profile. You're gonna click on material and then you have a couple options here. I'm gonna be using the Norton method because I'm gonna be using my Otor Laser Master 3, which is a diode laser, and this says mostly used on diode lasers. And I'm gonna be doing it on a piece of wood, so I'm gonna choose the Norton wood method. Now you can see your design has been converted into a black and white dithered image, and you can download it and import it into your laser engraving software. I'm gonna download it as a bitmap, but PNG is also fine. I just ran the file we created on the same piece of wood as the previous example and kind of struck out. 
Like I mentioned earlier, when you're working with image engraving, you really have to tweak your settings to get a nice image. So instead I ran the same file on a piece of scratch paper just so I could show you some of the detail in the engraving. In summary, if you're using AI to generate a simple flat one color logo, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you add keywords to your prompt that emphasize simplicity. Once you have a graphic that you're happy with, you're gonna vectorize it and it is now ready for laser engraving. If you're using AI to generate a complex image, something that's photorealistic or highly detailed, you are much less limited to the keywords you have to add to your prompt, you can go crazy. Once you get a graphic that you're happy with, you wanna upscale it as large as you can using either a free or paid upscaling AI program. That will allow you to increase the DPI without sacrificing quality. And the final step will be to dither your image either using ImageR, Lightburn image modes, or one of the myriad of other image dithering softwares out there. From there, you are ready to laser engrave.